Hi, I'm Tim Fabrici, co-crew chief on John Force's Nitro Funny Car, and today we're going to go over the anatomy of a piston and rod. So the basic function of a piston and connecting rod is to commune the power from the combustion chamber down to the crankshaft. By doing so, the piston, as the air-fuel mixture when it comes up on a compression stroke, compresses it, ignites with two spark plugs, pushes this piston down under extreme amounts of pressure through the connecting rod to the crankshaft. The piston is basically the heartbeat of the engine. Without the piston, the car won't run. This is what makes the rotating assembly go up and down. These will last approximately, they can last from one run to up to 10 runs on a Nitro Funny car. Uh, it just depends on how well the engine ran that day. Um, so we'll go through the basically parts and pieces and we'll assemble this. So we have a piston, typically we'd use a copious amounts of lubes when we're assembling this. We'll put the connecting rod into the piston right here. We take the wrist pin, slide it through, which joins the two together. So the piston will rock on the connecting rod while it goes up and down the stroke. So the, connect, the crankshaft can rotate as this goes up and down. Secondly, we'll take our wrist pin buttons, put them in the end of the pistons here. And what these will do is maintain the location of the wrist pin inside the piston and connecting rod. Without these buttons, the wrist pin will walk off the side and get into the, uh, the cylinder sleeve and inherently blow up an engine. We'll take our oil ring. The purpose of an oil ring is to distribute oil up and down the, the cylinder walls. So we have a nice lubrication for the skirts of the pistons here. We'll take a scraper ring, which as the piston goes up and down in stroke, it will remove the excess oil from the cylinder sleeve and return it through little oiling holes in the piston down to the crankcase itself. So that's an assembled oil ring onto a piston. The oil ring will hold onto these buttons, which will maintain the location properly in the cylinder. Take our second compression ring. <clears throat> There's a top and then there's a second compression ring or wiper ring, depending on the terminology of the person of that day. I think two of these are directional for compression. So on the piston itself, we have the gap. This will compress down into the sleeve itself through a ring compressor, push it down, and this will maintain the specific gap that we did predetermined for the crew chiefs. And under compression stroke, it has these little gas ports right here. Compression will come down the side of the piston, get behind the ring and expand it to make a gas tight seal to the walls itself, the cylinder walls itself. The second ring enhanced does the same thing and also secondly removes excess oil, put it back to the oil ring which returns it to the crankcase. All right, going forward as far as checking rod and piston between rounds or during service work when the guys are back at the shop or between races, we'll do a quick check this comes out, we had a beautiful run. We'll check the top of the pistons, make sure it doesn't have a dish. We'll allow up to two to three thousandths of a dish. Now, if it does have a dish, we'll have to compensate for adjusting the compression ratio on that particular cylinder. We'll check the ring lands. We'll have a go-no-go -no -go gauge, but this would be a simple way to make sure these roll through without getting pinched. And they still move freely. We'll do a go-no-go -no -go gauge, the top second ring, and we also have one for an oil ring. We'll look at the bores, the wrist pin bores, and make sure they're not galled up, any imperfections in it. Make sure the wrist pin still slides functionally through it. Has no deviation. We'll also quickly go over the buttons. We'll look down in these grooves, make sure there's no cracks, flaws, or big abrasion or gall marks on it. As far as the connecting rod itself, we'll put it in a checker. We'll check, we'll torque the rod, we'll check the big end, for a variance of tolerance, also as a small end. Then we'll put it in to see how tall it is. So a standard rod will start with a zero number. Now we can go down to minus eight thousandths, which really is just a bend in the connecting rod itself. So these things have immense amounts of pressures going on the racetrack. Um, you know, if you do the math, it's probably about 1200, 1300 horsepower per piston, which probably only turns over about 400 times going down the racetrack. 